Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today I'm going to talk about the only seven exercises you need to do if you're a prepper or just anyone in general. And they're all compound movements, they're not isolation movements. They, If you do these seven movements on a good workout split, you're going to build strength, you're going to build muscle, your testosterone levels are going to go up. More importantly, you're going to build functional strength. So it's actually going to translate into the real world. These are all done with free weights and you're going to have a good looking physique. So the difference between compound and isolation movements is simple. A compound movement utilizes more than one muscle group to perform resistance training. And resistance training is just a fancy word for lifting weights. A isolation movement only targets one muscle group and it's very hard for your body to build muscle or strength when doing an isolation movement because your body is meant to work together your body your muscles in your body are meant to work um, with each other so they have to be stimulated with each other in order to grow with each other so i'm going to talk about these uh, seven movements very quickly uh, in the order of best exercise to least effective so the number one best exercise for compound movements is the deadlift. It will work your posterior chain, your glutes, your lower back, your shoulders, your forearms. Uh, if you could only ever do one exercise in the gym, it should be the deadlift, bar none. Second best exercise is the squat. It's going to work out your lower body as well, uh, your, your uh, glutes your quadriceps, um, definitely going to be using a lot of core to stabilize the body. A bit of calves in there, not so much hamstrings. And uh, definitely a great exercise for producing, raising your testosterone levels and just building lower body strength. If there was only one lower body movement you could do, it should be the squat. Thirdly is the deadlift, and that's for your pushing movements, so it's going to work your front deltoids, which are your front shoulder muscles, your chest, your triceps, and it's going to work any sort of pushing movement. And it's also, in addition, going to work your core because your core is going to be required to stabilize the weight when you're on the bench. So by far, best um, upper body exercise is the bench press. Fourthly is the chin-up or the push-up. Best exercise to target your lats your latissimus dorsi, your upper back, and your biceps. So you're going to be utilizing both of those things in the that's essentially targeting the pulling muscles. Forearms will also be targeted as well. So chin-ups, pull-ups, by far one of the best exercises you can do calisthenics-wise for your upper body. And some people would even put it before bench press, but um, just because bench press is more common, I won't. Fifthly is the shoulder press. So shoulder press is going to be um, used to, of course, work your shoulders, and you're going to want to do this standing. Always do exercises standing before you do it sitting down because you're going to bring in more stabilizer muscles, and it's going to translate into a better functional fitness in the real world. So front, rear, side deltoids are going to be targeted. Core is definitely going to be targeted. And it's going to require a lot of stabilization muscles in your lower back as well. So shoulder press, number five, one of the best exercises you can do. Number six is the lunge. And this is going to just sort of uh, complement your squats and your deadlifts for targeting those more peripheral muscles in the lower body. So lunges can be do can be done with weight, um, but they're definitely a great exercise for rounding out your lower body, and they're definitely a compound movement because you're bringing in pretty much every lower body muscle and including your calves as well. Number seven is going to be dips. So dips are going to work your triceps, your uh, upper chest as well 
So it's a great compound movement for, it's very similar to a, a decline bench press. So you're going to see same results there, but it's going to more effectively target your triceps. So if you can only do seven exercises in the gym, those would be the ones that I would recommend you do. Uh, they're going to, as I say, promote the fastest gains in strength, mass, um, aesthetics, and functional fitness, and of course, testosterone production. The isolation movements are only going to work for people like bodybuilders who have, you know, who are probably doing some sort of supplementation with testosterone. And so they're going to have a greater anabolic response to any sort of stimulation, uh, whether it be isolation stimulation or compound stimulation. But the average person just doesn't have the testosterone levels to respond <clears throat> to that sort of uh, isolation training. So if you can only do, if you're pressed for time, uh, those are the exercises I would say you should do. And the because there's seven of them, you could do a seven-day split where you did one of those exercises for, depending on, you know, how advanced you are, anywhere between three and 12 sets per day. Or if you wanted to condense your split, you could do pushing movements like the dips, the bench press one day, back movements like the deadlift, the pull up another day, and you could do uh, the squats and the lunges on another day, and you could throw the shoulder press in with the chest and tricep day. So that would give you a three day split. So three days a week, go to the gym, do those exercises, eat lots of protein, one gram of protein per gram of body weight per day, and I guarantee you, you're going to make incredible fitness gains. You don't need a personal trainer. It's not rocket science. You do these seven compound movements and you're going to get jacked and you're going to get strong. Let me know what you think. Canadian.